Welcome survivors, we are here on Voxesto's The Gentleman's Ark server. And uh, if you don't know anything about this, he's got some videos talking about it, but it's an uh, unofficial server set on the Volgara map, or for, for Gala, I don't know. We'll uh, look up that at some point, actually, uh, not butcher it. And uh, so, you may be wondering, what is The Gentleman's Ark? What sets it aside? Well, it's not exactly typical official PvP. It is PvP, but we're looking for a different type of community here. So instead of uh, just going around, just smashing everything in, killing all the tames, you know, hiding your name, trying to zip around, we're trying to do something different. We're trying to make it actually fun <laughs> and try not to be trolled by this stupid mammoth. Um, so what we're looking to do is actually set it up. And you may notice with my hat there, I'm in full gentleman attire. And uh, what we want to do is make sure that people are enjoying the experience along the way. So that means, uh, you know, give people a sporting chance. Make sure that uh, you're just not butchering tames for no apparent reason. And uh, just take what you need. Don't blow up entire bases, that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to be doing in this series is uh, not only going with what their rules are, which, if you don't know them, they are on the Discord channel, and I suggest you check them out. But I'm also going to be giving you some guidelines as to how to be a true gentleman. And these are going to be my own personal preferences, things that are going to make the game significantly more difficult for myself. Uh, and I don't suppose very many people are going to be following me on this trend. But at the end of it, if you do, you'll be able to say that you are, in fact, a true gentleman. So typically, I would enjoy starting from scratch, and I did, but, uh, well, <laughs> whoops, totally forgot to hit the record button, and uh, I have built a starter base. You'll notice I am easily noticed. I am out in the open, not hidden at all, next to major landmarks like the Green Obelisk. All the beaver dams are over yonder, over in that blue water over there, somewhere over that way. So everyone is constantly coming in here. I'm pretty sure everybody on the server knows where I'm located, and that's okay. In fact, I welcome it, because in my opinion, if you're hiding, you're missing out on most of the game. So I encourage uh, a little bit of vulnerability here and there. You know, make sure that you are possibly getting stalked by uh, quets, and uh, that you know people have a chance to interact with you. So that's one thing I plan to do. Same thing, you know, like whenever I get out into PvP, what I'm going to try to do is to announce myself. So, you know, hopefully I end up in actual shootouts as opposed to just people being off their base and me soloing it. And some other stupid ideas I have that nobody's going to agree with is I think I'm going to actually play the game without a fabricator or any of the items that are produced in a fabricator. And that means no turrets. So I'm going to believe in the idea that you should never get rid of a dino's job. And if I have some tasks that I need done, I'm going to try to get a dino that can do it. So right now what I have is I have a low-level Anki just to get some metal. And I have a decent saber tooth Tiger. And those are just kind of incidental, accidental tames. Uh, I got a little pin here, nothing spectacular, but uh, just something to keep all the hyena dons out of here. Which, by the way, this map is absolutely stunning, but also full of hyena dons. And I uh, have some, some issues with them. Now, here's my, my box. Nothing too beautiful in here. It's uh, multi-layered. There's uh, a couple doors to get in. And I'm going to be filling this up with all kinds of nasty little dinos. So, Pegos. We're going to have Perlovia. We're going to have Dimorphs. We're going to have... Uh, whatever that new dino is from Extinction, that's a turret, the Velanosaur. And the interior is going to be filled with basically jack-all. So if you come raiding me looking for something nice, uh, sorry about your luck. Because I'm not in it for the loot. I'm not in it for BPs. That, that stuff's boring. You know, your mileage may vary. In fact, I imagine many people legitimately do enjoy... The experience of going out getting blueprints i used to for sure and i still do technically but on this particular server i want to do something different and so what i'm going to be out for i'm going to be out stealing people's pants and i'm going to be stealing their hats and why is that you may ask well 
here's a little history lesson about the uh, Vox Sesto servers. Vox, for some reason, has a tendency to shoot off your trousers. I don't know how this happens. I don't know how he does it. But every time I've ever fought Vox Sesto out in the open, my pants have blown up first. So I, I need a new set all the time. And uh, that means my treasure vaults are going to be filled with nothing but stolen pants. Also, because you can get these top hats, I want to find people's top hats. And that's going to be our metric of success. So I'm going to have hidden caches of just pants and hats. And uh, not just any hats. The ones that have been crafted by said player. So that's going to be my plan. And that's uh, pretty much it, honestly. So we're going to go ahead and get stuck in. It's been a few minutes into this video already. So let's, uh, let's figure out what we're doing. And I'll show you my crappy little base. You'll see I got a little bit of metal in here. I'm doubling it up. Uh, just to pretend like I have some, some useful stuff in here. I got a little bit of water, which uh, is a miracle. Got a couple forges going. And then my crappy little base is just a smithy, a box, a bed that accidentally went through a wall, and two little mortar and pestles. Ta-da! All a man needs. And we'll be rebuilding this all because this is crap. Uh, but I do want to kind of keep a nice look on the outside because a gentleman has a nice place. And I don't know about you, but I hate the look of metal. I hate the sound of it. So I'm going to be wrapping this bad boy up in something that looks pretty. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have ORP on this server. And we get a chance to actually, I don't know, do something cosmetic. Probably a terrible idea, honestly. But I like to do terrible ideas. So if you're into terrible ideas, this is the place for you. So we're going to go out and cruise around. Uh, one thing I do plan to do is actually get a flyer. And I kind of thought I was going to put it off a little longer than I have. But I'm discovering this area is not as full of stuff as I had hoped. And honestly, it might be kind of cool to move shop because I, uh, I actually have found some cooler areas after building all that stuff much to my chagrin. So we're going to go out on an adventure and see if we can find something. And you see how I was talking about these hyenodons? It's ridiculous. Wow, 150 beaver. Ridiculous is what this is. And also ridiculous, if you didn't know this, hyenodons are crazy high XP. I have leveled up so many times off these little dudes. And they get stuck in this water here. Oh, level 150 even. And it, they make for easy targets by my saber tooth. This uh, saber is pretty strong relative to the uh, swarms of hyenodons. Is that a player? No, it's just a running pterodon. Okay. We do have to watch out, though, because uh, we've already seen some of y'all on this server like to scrap. Which is a-okay. Hey, there we go. Found our last scraggler. Yeah, buddy. So as you can see, we gained some levels. I've been basically just pumping melee on this uh, cat. Got a little bit of health on him, so nothing crazy. But And then on my main character here, I am level 60, well, soon to be 69, it looks like. Uh, I've been pumping a lot more movement speed than I normally do. Normally, I stop at like 120, but I figured, uh, why not? We'll just go ahead and pump it up. Got some health. Uh, as you can see, we got some of the basics. We just got some flak armor and uh, got some metal pick and a little bit of crossbow. Nothing crazy. Very few arrows. So we need to get cranking on that if we're going to do some taming. But first, I want to actually figure out where these RGs are. And the last time I was out and about here, this pond, which is supposed to be filled with beavers, is uh, just swarming with T-Rexes. So th there's T-Rexes. There was an alpha, I think it was an alpha raptor running around. So we'll have to watch out for that. Got hyenas swimming in the drink. So it's going to be a good time. So what are the rules on this server, you may be asking? Well, the official ones listed so far are respectful PvP. So uh, basically the idea is it's okay to kill stuff. It's okay to kill people. It's okay to take their stuff. Uh, but you want to do it in a respectful way. So if they got passive tames they're not using, don't kill them. Don't do the uh, so-called meat run. 
uh, where you just munch all their dinos for no apparent reason. And um, just take what you need. Don't level people's houses you know, to the ground. Um, here's another thing. Make sure you are a gentleman. Empty the beaver dams. Don't leave wood in them. Don't be that guy. And uh, see what else we got. Things that uh, are also important is um, make sure that when you're PVPing, and, and please do PVP because it's fun, but make sure that what you're doing makes people want to play the game. So if, you're, if your experience is a completely one-sided show where you and a group of people just smoke one guy that has nothing, there is no fun in that. That player is going to stop playing and we're going to lose population. It's, it's no good. So make sure that the encounters are a good time. I mean, obviously, you want to win the encounter, but uh, you know, make sure you're at least having a, a bit of competition. You know, don't go in, blow up a dude's entire base, because all that means is somebody is going to want to stop playing the game. And uh, unless you want to play solo, uh, trolling people off the server is not the way to go. So what else do we got going on? We also have a no teaming rule. So this server is solo and duo only, and you are not allowed to team up with other people beyond that. Uh, yeah, that's just a, a way of keeping it into this small kind of close-knit kind of group that we got going on. And then let's see what else. No building in artifact caves or blocking obelisks. That's pretty uh, obvious. On this map, there are bosses well, not technically yet, but there will be. So we need to make sure that those artifact caves are open. And, um, you know, just the obelisks are usually off limits. So you want to make sure you avoid that. Uh, also, because we're trying to do community around here, it's important for people to know who you are and not to do the thing where you hide your name with little boxes or one, two, three, or name yourself human. You know, because that's no fun. You want to make sure that people know who you are, who's been hanging out around their base, uh, who's been fighting the bugs outside, apparently. Here we go. Come on now. Titans. There he is. Steal another Stego egg. Just make sure we're overweight. That's how we roll. Let's see what else we got. What is that? Oh, that's a big... Okay, uh, and then what else do we have? First come, first serve. Now, this is a rule that you need to pay attention to. So if somebody has placed a foundation somewhere, that is their base location. You can't force them off. You can't blow up everything and take their spot unless they decide they want to leave voluntarily. And that doesn't mean go over there and harass them until they leave. It means if they actually just legit don't want to be at a place. Yeah, kind of like what we may end up doing, where we may be jumping ship to a new location. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, obviously, no bug abuses and cheating, so no undermeshing, no duping, um, no using cheats somehow, any of that stuff. If you're found doing that, goodbye. You will be de-whitelisted and banned from the server. Uh, let's see what's the next one. Spawn blocking. Uh, obviously, there are places where players spawn. And uh, a lot of times on servers you get, especially with ORP, uh, you'll find on official people build their base or just like a big fence or trap or something. And then people log in and they can't go anywhere. Uh, so that's something we want to avoid. So no building on popular spawn locations. Uh, let's see, also no kiting of wild dinos. So that means don't drag alphas or gigas into somebody's base. Uh, it's just not cool. It's not fun. It's not fair. Don't do it. And let's see. I got to scroll down to see if I can read the rest of this stuff. So give me a moment. Uh, alliances are disabled due to the usage of ORP. Uh, so there will be no alliances. So kind of goes along with our no teaming rule. It's fine to kind of talk to people, have friendships, do trading, all that kind of stuff. And in fact, we encourage it. And there will be, in fact, some events here and there where uh, you may be able to t group up with people in spite of these rules, uh, but only for those specific reasons. So in your day-to-day -day arc, your day-to-day -day highness slang, we want to avoid any kind of teaming or alliances, and uh, so no alliances. Uh, what else? Oh, toxicity. 
Now, if any of you have played on servers of any type, you probably know what I'm talking about. People just being really rude to each other, uh, creating hostile environment for each other to play, uh, spamming, you know, trying to tax people, just generally being a douche. You can't be a gentleman and a douche at the same time, in spite of uh, the thoughts, you know. So don't do it. Don't make yourself that guy. And everything is going to be just fine. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, um, there's some more information about being a respectful PvP -er. So one thing we want to avoid is attacking people while they're taming, hitting their tames while they're uh, knocked out and you're they're trying to get them up. So, you know, if you see somebody doing that, leave them alone. Be be a gentleman. Be cool. Don't be that guy. Let's see. Uh, it, you know, if you raid somebody, cool. That sounds fantastic. But let's make sure you're not raiding the same guy or group of people over and over and over. You know, give them some time to build up. Make sure that they're actually able to participate in the game before you come back and wreck them. And let's see what else. Uh, oh, knocking people out. Uh, it, it's just not fun being knocked out for long periods of time. So generally, if you wouldn't want to be caged for an extensive period of time and harassed, just don't do that to other people. Okay. Uh, so what's that time? We're not going to give set a, a specific amount of time on that. It, it's kind of uh, should be pretty obvious to people that you just don't leave somebody in there locked in a cage for 20 plus minutes or something along those lines. And let's see what else. Oh, here's a big one. Don't freaking combat log. It is not cool. So what is combat logging? Well, for those of you who don't know, that's when due to ORP, which is offline raid prevention, um, your buildings become immune to damage. And some people will attempt to abuse this when they're getting raided by logging out thinking, aha, that makes me immune. And uh, they're right, but it also makes you banned. So don't do it. And on the flip side of that, if you are raiding somebody, make sure that they don't have a raid cooldown. So if uh, if you see that their, their timer is on, saying that they're going to be offline soon, uh, you are not permitted to raid that base. We want to make sure that all of our fighting is done between people who are actually playing the game. So if you're actually there, able to participate in a fight, that's when we're ready to have some fun. So make sure you're having a good time by actually fighting other players instead of waiting until nobody's around to fight you and you're fighting a building. So that's, that's pretty much it. Now, I personally have some other things I like to do. Like, for instance, I find that uh, the picking and dropping people is super lame. So you may enjoy that. You may find it to be a perfectly viable strategy in game. And it technically is. But uh, for me, I just don't enjoy it. I don't find it to be something I like to do to people. So you won't see me dropping people from great heights to kill them. I may pick some... <laughs> I may struggle to get out of this door. <laughs> there we go. I, I may actually pick somebody off their mount and drop them nearby on the ground somewhere uh, and that's you know I could see that being a strategy that I'm, I'm okay with uh, sometimes I like to mess with people you know just pick them up make them freak out for a little bit set them down just as a just kind of a ha hey how you doing and and that's cool too but uh, I don't plan on doing the thing where you pick them up and run them out of parachutes and uh, leave their teams out in the open and uh, another bit of how to be a gentleman Say you kill somebody off the top of their team. Their team's out there, there's hyenas running around. Don't go murder their, their team. Also, if you can do it, a true gentleman makes sure that they can get back to their team and get home safe. And why, you may ask, not only is it just kind of a cool thing to do, but it ensures that in the future, they have the opportunity to possibly come back at you. And that's when the game is more enjoyable, when you actually have somebody who can compete with you. All right, so while I gather up the materials to make some narcotics, I have uh, been paying attention to chat, and there seems to be a little disagreement going on between some players. And uh, here's a good example of what's going on. Um, you want to make sure that you are always good to your word and that you're not somebody who's
hide things in your tames, hiding uh, your actions in terms of like, you know, if you attack somebody, don't don't lie about it. And I have no idea which person is telling the truth here, but we have an example of a player who uh, claims that they were flying towards a drop, and when they got down to that area, they crashed, as in their computer crashed, and the result was a whole bunch of hyena dons came through and destroyed this other guy's raft and his taint. And now that other player is angry about it and is uh, retaliating and killing and stuff. So it's possible it's just a misunderstanding and PvP happens and that's totally legit. But you want to make sure people feel like they understand what's happening and that they're both playing the game together as opposed to at each other. So we'll see if we can get this thing diffused down a little bit to where it's a little bit of a uh, more friendly experience than what it sounds like it is right now. And in your own gameplay, I hope that you're actually being careful about that stuff as well. Ooh, well, it's not what I was looking for, but that's not bad. Might be too dark for you guys to see, but I found a 130 Pterodon as I was up here looking for RGs. That's an easy tame. Now it's time to go get some prime. I'll let that starve out for a few minutes. Let's see if we can find a stego or something. Oh, of course now there is an RG right there. Well, well, well. So uh, one thing you're gonna notice is that we can't gamma on this map. Foxesto has locked us out. Oh, there's T-Rex right there, that's not good. And uh, anyway, that means that night recording is gonna be tough. In fact, you probably can't see anything from my guess, given how YouTube works. And uh, so I will try not to do very much when it's dark, but it just so happens I'm out and about doing my thing. Let's kill these stigs. Let's pull them over here so we're away from those Brontos. And away we go. Yep, here comes an RG. Yeah, that should be all the Prime will need. And I also see there's a cave here I want to check out. Looks pretty interesting. Let's see if our little terror buddy is still alive. Yeah. I never tamed Pterodon, so I have no idea what their stats are supposed to look like. Imagine these are going to be crap, because that's how it always goes for me. That's okay, I just needed to get to where I'm going so I can actually get dinos that I want to get. And then I'll be perfectly fine. Okay, looks like six is going to do it. Hopefully that'll last long enough. Probably won't. But in the meantime, let's uh, go scouting around a little, see if we can find a dino I do like. Okay, the old Argentavis. Nope, we got a player there. Just flew right past me. I have to keep an eye out. I don't know who it was. Can't see because I don't have a spyglass. Alright, well, let's check out this cave, see what's in here. Oh, come on, a 145 right next to me? That was nice, but we're not going to tame it. Only need one Terra. Oh, hey, buddy. Huh. It's literally just a cave. Well, if you're interested in getting into just a round open cave like that, I am located at, uh, what, 5270 it looks like. It's kind of a neat idea. You know, if you're in a cave damage and that sort of thing. No, it might be. Pretty decent if we want to set up a just all dino 
kind of defense strategy. You know, that might not be a bad idea. Seems like a terrible idea, but terrible ideas are the most fun ideas. What is that? This random pterodon? Yeah, okay. It sounded like it's flapping a little strange, like it was maybe a player, but I think it's just random pterodon doing its thing. Yep, there it is. Now, one thing I did see earlier is that at the top of this mountain, there is an RG trap. And it looks like somebody left it open for people to use, which would be quite a gentlemanly thing to do. So we're going to see if we can find it. And we're also going to pay attention because I think that's that player again, hovering in that tree. Also, don't see a way up there. Yeah, you know, I am liking this idea. I mean, on top is definitely the correct place to build your base right here would be pretty amazing. But I don't think people would look for you down below. So it might be a, a little sneakier. Obviously terribly vulnerable, but if you could just walk an Anki up here. Oh man, look at this. Nice flat spot. But again, you're up top. Oh, look. Hey, a note. There's a little box thing at. Right there it is. Oh, I've already got this one. Nice. Well, that's handy. So that might be something that attracts people at the top that we probably want to avoid. What is that? Oh, Carno. You don't scare me, Carno or Scorpion. Probably having my ra base rated as we speak. Let's, uh, let's actually check that out. Anything? Nope. Okay. Now, if you do join this server, you're going to run into the fact that this map is kind of deadly. Oh, this is cool. You will die a lot on this map. At least I did. It was uh, probably the most I've ever died at the beginning of the game. Everything was out to get me. Need for a good time, though. Yeah, I am starting to think I want to build that little cave. As I said, from a strategy point of view, it's a terrible idea, but could be really fun. Have to see what's around, though. Like, is there water? Is there other resources worth getting? Also, where in the heck is that pterodon? Right there. Like, what is actually around me? Are we close to those beavers? Yeah, I think we are. This guy about to wake up? Nope. Still doing okay? Though the prime is about to run out. Let's get some of that going. A couple pieces here. Yeah, really, I guess once we get this pterodon, we can go scout around a little bit more. See what's going on. Looks like it's got another three bites, probably. Let's really look at this thing again. How big is this opening? That's pretty large. So really you can get any kind of dino in there. But if we built like around this corner here, people wouldn't immediately notice we're in here. Hmm. The odds of wild dinos just wandering in. Probably pretty high. So we got T-Rex spawns right there, tons of Brontos. Got a water source right here. Lots of raptors. And that's Beaver Dam Island over there. Okay, I like this. I think this is where we're gonna go. I have a feeling Apex is gonna be uh, parked on top of our head. Cause that's, uh, seems like a natural place for Apex to go, but you know, offline rape prevention, I think we'll be fine. Just looks neat, nice and flat. Gives us a weakness. I can dig it. Alright, so. Next thing. Once we get this Pteranodon, get an Argy going. 
Look at that player fly across the top there. And uh, we'll see about maybe moving stuff over. A little soul crushing tearing down an entire base, but eh, can't get too invested, right? It was all done off camera. You gotta make something together. Now, if you are playing this map, um, kind of curious what places you found that you like. What are some interesting things you've noticed and places you think might make for good base locations? Oh, look at that 150 galley. What is that? Carnap. You know, and in general, what do you look for in your base locations? You know, what do you prioritize? I mean, obviously, everybody wants everything. You want, like, resources and hidey places and flat and all that kind of stuff. But... There's got to be a priority, you know, do you favor being sneaky or do you prefer having all the resources nearby? What resources do you think are more important than others? So I like to hear what you guys have to say. All right, and there's Bait. She's awake. So we've got ourselves a flyer, a new base location, and a goal to get an RG waiting for us in the next episode. Thanks for coming. Leave a like and subscribe for more. And until next time, stay a true gentleman.